Hey, I'm KK, and today I thought it'd be important to talk about a modern approach to being inclusive. You know, being in the business of being boutique means that oftentimes we've embraced being small, right? We've embraced having tiny teams, small physical spaces, if any at all. And I think what we lack with that type of perspective is how to make someone feel incredibly welcome every single time, no matter who they are. You know, it's interesting. One of the things I do every year for clients is I secret shop the business. And when I listen to client calls as well as shop clients myself, the number one thing I hear that I actually desire, even as a consumer myself, is the answer to one pivotal question. Will there be people who are like me? I think that's the question that deep down everyone is asking when they call your studio and ask what they're supposed to wear or what time to arrive or any question that kind of really leads into this whole, will I fit in? Are you people going to be welcoming to me? And so that's a very unique take to inclusivity versus exclusivity. And I think it's important for us to think about because being in boutique business, whether you're a fitness, beauty, health, or wellness business, I think this is where we can actually do better. It's where we can actually kind of level up the game that we've been playing. And I think that is why being more inclusive is not just good morally, it's good for your bottom line. It's great for increasing revenue and welcoming new clients in, converting them into long-term clients because they feel connected, right? Because they're a part of your community and then they're thrilled to enjoy your services for years and years to come. This may seem overwhelming at first, but actually it's really simple to do. First is to be really honest about where you're at as a business. Who do you serve? Who do you desire to serve? Where would you like to grow? And this could have everything to do with ethnicity, you know, neighborhood, gender, background, but could also be something as simple as, you know, we see the same type of girl come in here. She has a dancer body. She wants to keep her dancer body, but most people don't realize that you don't have to be a dancer to be able to enjoy our exercises. So see how that has little to do with the things that we think about as demographic, but a lot to do with the scope of the client base that you can actually welcome in more. I'll give you another example. Say you're a salon and spa business and you're looking to grow with clients that don't necessarily prioritize self-care. So you know the clients that are coming in and spending money, right? The clients that are typically prioritizing your services right now are actually prioritizing their dollars towards their self-care and to your services. So democratizing your services to people who may not first see the benefit of getting their hair blown out or getting a massage, it's gonna take some intentional effort, but being inclusive in this way, instead of being exclusive only for a set group of people means more of this and more expansion of your business. It's a win-win here. This is where you and the client get something out of this venture. So I really recommend that you think about this and use communication tools to start opening the door and start welcoming more people into your business. Using words and phrases like everybody, all are welcome. What it does is it tells people that they can be comfortable to take that first step. And when they do, it's extremely important that your wording matches up with your actions. So think about that. Don't just create a marketing campaign, create a culture change. That's going to give you the client base that you can grow and nurture over and over again. So this is my modern approach to being inclusive instead of exclusive. I'm KK. I'll see you next time.